Hi friends, what's on my mind today? Well, uh, all week I've been collecting pictures of um, creepy crawlies in Mexico. And I was going to show you one here. It's time to paint the pool surround. It's looking pretty bad. Um, collecting pictures of creepy crawlies in Mexico this week. I don't know if this is going to focus. It's down there in the pool. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. There is a scorpion. Looks like it's focusing through four feet of water pretty good. Yeah, I think uh, that's my project for today is to paint the pool surround. It used to be white. And the reason it's not white anymore is because I figured out that white or light colors attract, we call them bobos. They're little midges that hatch. They live one night, but there'll be like clouds of them, uh, bobos. Not this time of year, but the white collects them. So anytime we were out swimming, there'd be a cloud of bobos around us. So I painted it dark blue and I fixed that. This is a beautiful thorn. It's really pretty, isn't it? All those beautiful fronds. Is that what you call fern leaves? Fronds? No, that's palms. Well, anyway. And then I have another one over here. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Leaf cutter ants. Stripped them. Just totally stripped them. And uh, they're coming from over here. So we got to find them and do them in. Oh, look here. You see how big these leaves are? Well, looky here. There. Stripped by the ant. Leaf cutter ants. That would have happened in the last... Uh, couple of nights. It doesn't take two nights for that to happen. Here, look at here. There's another one. They just they chew off the leaves. A whole big leaf. They'll do that in one night. And I was out here the other night and found them. Matter of fact, I have a video of them not coming this way, but over there, they were using that hose. That hose right over there as a roadway. You'll see it, but it's pictures in the dark, so it's not great.
Kind of a cloudy day today. Got some blue sky up there. That, that avocado tree is taking the year off. I looked and looked, I think I only saw two avocados on it, little tiny ones. Um, avocados do that. Every once in a while, they just take a year off. Oh, my butterfly, it's not flying because you need to shine up the solar thing and point it more towards the sun. Come on. There we go. It used to be yellow on top. It's still kind of yellow on the bottom. Faded. Anyway, bought that in Quartzsite, Arizona. I'm going to get another one this year. Maybe more. I always expected a bird to come and attack it, but birds are smarter than you think. Well, let's talk about my shirt. Um, birds of Paradise. Let's go see if we can find one. Uh, there's some over there. No, nope, not blooming. That thing's getting way out of hand. Might be time to do something about that. Uh, this is a birds of paradise. No blooms. That's a birds of paradise. Oh, there's a... There's one, but it's seen its better days. There's some more. Seen its better days. Condina's uh, been trimming something. Ah, uh, ooh, Cupa de Oro. The cup of gold. It's looking beautiful. Look at that. Full of buds, too. Oh, speaking of creepy crawlies, it's full of an ant or two. Hmm. This cactus is about to burst into colorful blooms. Look at that. Hmm. Uh, what were we doing? Oh, we were looking for a, we're going slow because I'm barefooted. Uh, we're looking for um, birds of paradise like my shirt. This looks like something that needs to be taken care of. Oh. Those cactuses, ah, there's a barrel cactus. There's a huge piece of obsidian, see that? I collected that at Mount Tequila. Uh, yellow blooms, little yellow blooms on that, on that cactus. Don't fall in the cactus, Jerry. Ouch. Ooh. Okay. This hose, I was talking about this hose right here. A palm frond fell off. It's the 16th of September today. It's a holiday, so Condito's not here. The yellow flower. This is a bottle brush bush, but... No brushes. Oh, air ferns. They're a uh, parasite. See a lot of them on the wires because the birds put them there in their poop. There's a birds of paradise, but again, it's seen its better day. This is a plumeria. It's what they make lays out of in uh, 
Hawaii. Another birds of paradise, no bloom. There's a heliconia. This is a uh, double colored poinsettia. I'm going to back up so you can see how big that is. That's the same kind of poinsettia you buy at Christmas time <laughs> in the United States. They get a little bigger here. Another birds of paradise, aves de pariso, shrimp plants. Oh, avocados today. One, two, three, four, five. A couple that probably broke because they hit the rocks. Ha! Ah, there's a birds of paradise that has a bloom on it. Birds of paradise. Oh, there's the Pariso. You probably can't hear it, but there's a new bloom up there in the palm tree. And what you probably can't hear is it's full of bees buzzing. And after it starts to develop, you get these fruits. They get about the size of a apricot. They kind of taste that way too, but you can't eat them because they're too stringy. Here's one that's got some blue in it. Birds of Paradise. Isn't that beautiful? Anyway, we're talking about those and we were looking for them because I put on my Birds of Paradise shirt today so that I could sit out there by the lake and tell you a story. Let's go out there. Lirio in the lake again. Here's some guys fishing with the net. Hi again, friends. So what's my story today as I sit here on the shore of Lake Chapala in Jalisco, Mexico at my home in Ajijic? Well, I was looking through some old pictures this morning, and a lot of people are always asking in comments about, hey, tell us something about you and Lynn's earlier life. So I'm looking through some old pictures thinking, hey, I'll find a picture, and uh, we'll talk about it. Oh, hang on a second. There's a guy out there fishing with the boat. He is a commercial fisherman. He has a net out there. He's probably having trouble with the lirio in his net. They catch a little uh, freshwater tilapia, and they're not always big enough to eat, but they sell them to an uh, animal food factory for protein. So, where were we? Uh, talking about going through old pictures, and it occurred to me that I could have a regular segment for a short period. A short little couple of minutes on each of my videos about uh, talking about a picture. You know, some of my really early videos, um, I took pictures from a long time ago and started talking about it. And it was the reason I named the channel JC Travel Stories because the pictures were travel pictures and I talked about going to Alaska and going to Europe and going to Africa and whatever, but those are old videos. You can go find them if you want. Uh, today, I found some pictures of Prineville Reservoir in Oregon. And uh, the picture I found reminded me of something I don't have a picture of, but I found a picture on the internet. When my father retired in 1972, he bought a brand new 1972 20-foot Champion uh, uh, motorhome. It was, uh, by today's uh, monikers, a Class A, but 20-foot long, it was pretty small. 
And this is a picture of exactly what it looked like. So, one time, uh, when he first uh, decided that he wasn't going to use it anymore after many years, so this would have been in the, I don't know, probably the 19, late 1980s, um, he left it out in Oregon for me and my brother to use. And uh, Lynn and I decided we needed an excuse to go use that motorhome. So we've always kind of been interested in rock hounding. So we called up our great aunt, Katie, because Katie's husband was a big uh, rock hound and he did a lot of uh, lapidary stuff and had all of the tools and the saws and made tables out of things and jewelry and so on. But anyway, so we know that Katie, great aunt Katie, she was my grandmother's um, sister. Great aunt Katie knew about rock hounding. So we called up Katie and said, hey, let's go rock hounding. Uh, where should we go? And do you want to go along? And so anyway, we drive from Oregon out to Prineville Reservoir, which is I don't know, a couple hundred miles in that motorhome, and uh, it's my wife Lynn, our two children who are like three and four years old at the time, uh, a boy and a girl, Peter and Becky, and uh, our great aunt Katie, who is probably 80 years old. And Lynn's mother, my mother-in-law, who was in her late 70s. So that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six people who are going to sleep in this motorhome. Now, above the driver's seat, there's a bed with just enough room that your nose doesn't touch the ceiling. And above the back windows there, there is another thing that a cubby hole that opens up into another bunk again just enough room that your nose doesn't touch the ceiling and below that window the table makes into a bed actually all the way across the motorhome and bigger than a king-sized bed well on the way out there uh, our daughter used to talk a lot talk 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 we used to say when she was before she could talk, we used to say we can't wait till she learns how to talk so we can tell her to shut up. <laughs> anyway, uh, Lynn and I kind of made a side bet about who would talk the most, our daughter Becky or Aunt Katie. And the fact is that all the way out there for 200 miles, neither one of them shut up and we couldn't figure out who was listening. So it came time for bed. Now, there's six of us who are going to sleep in that 20-foot motorhome. So here's the sleeping arrangement. Above the driver's station, um, our son Peter, who's four years old, is going to sleep up there. And above the um, table that makes into a bed in the back, uh, our daughter, three-year-old Becky, is going to sleep up there. And Lynn is going to stretch out and sleep on the floor of the motorhome. And in the bed is going to be uh, my great aunt, my mother-in-law, and me, with the mother-in-law in the middle. So we all trying to go to sleep, and first of all, uh, the mother-in-law goes to sleep and she starts snoring and then Aunt Katie goes to sleep and she's snoring and son Peter he's I don't know snoring or mumbling in his sleep and Becky she's breathing hard and it's not in cadence it's not all together and it keeps the rhythm keeps changing so it's like <laughs> And Lynn and I are awake listening to this, trying to sleep, but we get the giggles. 
So she's laying on the floor giggling, and I'm laying in the bed trying not to giggle out loud, holding, <laughs> and of course, bunks in the bed. <laughs> And my mother-in-law wakes up and says, what are you two doing over there? So that's how we got to be rock hounds. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed my story today. <laughs> See you soon. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.